In this pair of videos, we're going to look at the Social Sciences Citation Index. In the first, we'll look at using it as a tool for finding how often an article has been cited based on the title or topic area. Okay? To begin, let's open our browser and go to the university web portal. Okay, here we are. I've logged into the portal. Um, I'm now going to the launch pad and I need to find the Fogler Library. So there's Fogler Library. Let's select that. I now scroll down to databases. I'm going to look in the databases and we're looking for the Social Science Citation Index. Um, yeah, say that 10 times really fast. Um, I'm just going to jump to the S's rather than scroll through everything. And here it is, Social Sciences Citation Index. So I'm going to cl click on that. Here we are. Um, now a few things to look at. The Social Science Citation Index is part of what's called the Web of Science. And we can select a database here at the top, and the default is the Web of Science Core Collection. But there are other uh, databases that you can tap into uh, that can be useful if you're in a, in a specialty area or a specialty sort of topic. Sometimes some of these other um, databases may be more helpful in those cases. But we're going to stick with the Web of Science Core Collection. Then here we can select the time span that we want to look um, under and the defaults 1900 to 2020 but you can also select like the last five years or other date ranges you can pick a custom date range if you want to look within a, a very specific time period then we select the index indices that we want the default is because of the way we got here is the social sciences citation index but i also like to add the science citation index expanded because some of the work that I'm interested in may not fall within the social sciences index. So I'm going to select that one as well. Then we come up here and there's two boxes. This is where we do all of our work at this point. In this first box we enter our search and then the second box we say what we're looking for. So let's say I want to find an article, a specific article based on the title. So I come over here and I enter the title of the article. Now, you don't have to enter the whole title of the article, but you want to enter enough words that the search engine isn't turning back, you know, returning thousands and thousands of articles. But you don't have to enter, the, the again, you don't have to enter the entire title. So I'm going to do an article from a few years ago, Impact of the Built, oops, Built Environment on Children's. And again, I'm not typing that. I think that's enough to maybe give me a couple articles. Now, I need to tell it what I want. And so over here, there's all different options you can pick. I think the default is topic, but I want title and it's going to look within the title of journal articles for these specific words. Um, and it'll give me back any journal article that has all of those words somewhere in the title. That doesn't have to be in that order, just somewhere in the title. So let's do search and see what we get. We got two results. So there's two journal articles that are in the Web of Science universe that um, have all of those words in the title. And sure enough, here's the one we want. It's the second one here. Um, the lead author is Jose Sapochnik, a, a former colleague of mine, fantastic guy, um, highly productive. So this is the article we want, and we can see that it's been cited 17 times based on the Web of Science core collection information. Um, now, this is probably a lowball estimate of the number of citations because other, other search engines, Google Scholar, for example, um, do a larger Google Scholar does a, uh, in particular does a larger search, so it tends to find more articles, more citations for articles than you'll see in the, the Social Science Citation Index. But that's, that's again, the citation numbers from this, uh, for this article, and that's how many different journal articles have now been published based on the Web of Science universe of sources. How many have been published that have specifically cited this paper? Um, in their in that in their own paper. Now 
we can click a few things here. We can get a full text by clicking here. We can get a full text. It'll pop up a, a copy of the article, which is great. You know, right here, if you want to actually read the entire article, you can get it there as well. Um, the um, So keep that in mind. Now, let's go back. And instead of looking for a, a specific article based on the title, let's say I'm interested in a, in a topic area and want to see what are some of the, the, the widely cited research that's been done in that topic area. And um, I'm going to pick facilitated communication. Oops. Facilitated communication. And now I need to come over here and, and say topic. I'm not looking at the title anymore. I don't want to just look in the title. I also kind of want to look at anything on the topic of, oops, how what happened here? Facilitated. Facilitated communication. There we go. And I want to look in the topic. And again, we just select that from this drop down list here. And the topic doesn't just search in the title, it also searches in the abstract and the keywords and that for those specific words, facilitated and communication anywhere in the abstracts. That's how it's kind of tapping into the larger topic of facilitated communication. Now, also when you're looking for a, a this sort of a topic area, the time span can become more important because remember, this is going to pull back any articles all the way back to 1900. It's not going to give me right now what's the most widely cited article that people are looking at this year. It's looking historically if I want to kind of get the, the big picture of a, of a research area. So I'm going to keep it there for now because um, I want to I want to look at the historical I want to look at the big picture of what's what have people been doing with facilitated communication if you've seen the the video on um, prisoners of silence you'll kind of know why that might be of interest so let's do search and see how many we get where does this go and wow I mean it found 27,200 articles on that on the topic of facilitated communication and immediately that tells me, I think there's something wrong here. There's no way there's 27,000 articles on facilitated communication. And this is a kind of an easy mistake to make. And you notice it once it happens that, well, look, you can see right here, these first articles, they, that doesn't look like that has anything to do with facilitated communication. Um, the, um, nope. So the problem that we've done is Remember, it's looking for those two words. It's not looking for facilitated communication. It's looking anywhere in the title, anywhere in the abstract. Is there the word facilitated? And is there the word communication? It might be facilitated over here, blah, 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 communication. That's so, it's understandable. There's lots and lots of articles that somewhere in their abstract use those two words. So if I want to look at something more specific, if I want to look at a combination of words that go together like facilitated communication, you need to put them in quotation marks. And then it will only return articles that have those two words right, you know, in that order, exactly as it appears in the quotation marks. Let's try that again and see what we get. Okay, 389, that's a much more manageable number. Now again, it doesn't guarantee that all 389 are about what we in education think of as facilitated communication. Um, it just means that these are 389 articles that somewhere in the abstract or the title, it has the words facilitated communication right next to each other. And in fact, if we look at this first article here, uh, question prompts for patients with HIV, Probably not, a ta probably not talking about what we think of as facilitated communication. But at least the 389 gives me a more manageable list of research that has looked at facilitated communication than starting with 22,000. Now, the default here is it's sorted um, by the date um, from the newest to the, the oldest. And then let's, let's look at the time cited and see articles that are cited the most first and then down to the less cited articles. So here's one, we up here, 617. 
patient physician communication, probably not facilitated communication that we're thinking of. But right here, number two, apparent cause, apparent mental causation, that might be. Number three, management of children with autism spectrum disorder. That's probably definitely one that I would want to take a look at if I'm looking at all these articles that have um, examined facilitated communication. This one's been cited 523 times. So probably a fairly widely, um, well, clearly a widely cited article on the topic. Technical report, diagnosing autism spectrum disorder. That looks good. Um, randomized control trial with early autism symptoms. Yep, there's another one. Oh, here's one. It's got it right in the title, History of Facilitated Communication. We keep scrolling. Oh, number eight, here's the Wheeler article that, that we saw in the, the, the videos on uh, Prisoners of Silence. So here it is right here. And again, for the ones that have full texts available, you can click on the full text and go straight to a copy of the article. And you're seeing how many times they've all been cited. The, um, so again, this is a, a, nice, a nice efficient tool if you're trying to look at what articles are being cited um, for a given topic area. Okay, the, um, so let's wrap up this video here. In our next video, we'll look at finding articles uh, and citation numbers for based on the specific researcher as well as look at how you can use some of the tools here as a way for you to really become an expert in some content area that you find interesting. Okay, sounds good. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.